I will be talking about scaling and potential uses for the Hyperclova Japanese base model. Thank you. So the presenters are I myself, Sato from Line, uh, and uh, Yamazaki san. So Sato will be going first. Uh, with uh, Overlast, uh, uh, we have. I have been active uh, because uh, we have 174 Satos uh, at line. And uh, I am a, a manager, engineering manager of NLP development team. In open source, uh, analog D uh, is the open source uh, development work that I am doing. And uh, Takato Yamazaki he, uh, is a soft where engineer focusing on dialogue uh, systems. Uh, he's from Aizawa Lab of University of uh, Tokyo, and uh, he is involved in the development of application of Hyperclova. So two of us uh, will be uh, taking you through this presentation. So the foundation model, uh, so to show size and performance, uh, the number of parameters uh, are conveyed directly last year. Uh, the Japanese 39 billion, uh, parameter uh, model uh, was assessed, evaluated, uh, and uh, also uh, we introduced about uh, how uh, to apply. And now this year in 2022, we have achieved 82 billion uh, Japanese base model. We have completed this. So this 82 billion uh, model uh, we evaluated, uh, but at the same time, uh, we were able uh, to uh, achieve uh, uh, the e real application. Uh, so uh, based on this 82 billion uh, model, uh, and uh, also I'll be talking about uh, the expertise uh, we got from application. So today's agenda, as you can see here, first of all, prompting. This is the methodology used uh, in creating uh, applications based on this uh, model. And uh, next, Hyperclova uh, Japanese 82 billion uh, performance evaluation will be explained. Uh, and I will hand over to Yamazaki. And uh, he'll be talking about uh, development of applications with Hyperclova. And finally, back to myself, Sato, and uh, deploying foundation models uh, in a real world. Uh, we do have challenges, so I would like to share with you some of the challenges. So uh, let me cover the prompting first. So uh, to control foundation model, uh, there are fine tuning and prompting. There are two methodologies. The first fine tuning, uh, as long as uh, you have the teaching uh, data, uh, then uh, you can uh, reduce the cost, uh, but uh, achieve uh, the quality to a certain level. However, when it comes to prompting, you don't need a teaching data. Uh, however, uh, you need uh, samples. Uh, and as long as you have samples, uh, then uh, without uh, any additional uh, learning, you'll be able to achieve a certain level of uh, quality. And prompting uh, is what we mainly used uh, uh, to control hyperclova. Uh, so uh, let me share with you uh, what uh, you can get uh, from prompt. I'll show you a video. But uh, here, Clova Studio. Uh, this is uh, the application interface. Uh, and using Clova Studio, oh, let me explain the flow. First of all, uh, we will use a Clova Studio. So as an example, uh, the outline of our presentation we will be creating and prompt. Below the uh, title, uh, we will be entering and uh, uh, you will in the first line, uh, it will be reflected. Uh, so you have to be careful here. As an example, um, the company name, title, and outline, uh, there are three items. Uh, and finally, uh, like sample, oh, we have the company name and the title of this presentation. And after that, uh, uh, with the cursor at the end, uh, you enter. And uh, you get the output. Uh, and it's nicely written, and it's a dialogue uh, system. Uh, and uh, that's how uh, it is written. Uh, so I don't even have to uh, write uh, this out. Uh, so this is how you can use Hyperclova Writer. And I'm sure uh, you've understood how easy it is. And uh, now um, I'm sure uh, you got the idea of how we can use the prompt. Uh, but in the past, it was not easy to get an idea. Uh, and I'll be coming back and forth uh, to the prompt, uh, so rest assured. So using uh, this uh, data generation of 
based on prompt. Uh, this uh, became very familiar with a stable diffusion uh, demo also uh, when uh, this uh, was uh, published. So the stable diffusion, you enter a prompt uh, and get the image. It is very easy. E and uh, you prepare the query, the text, uh, and uh, of course, uh, we got uh, the English version. Uh, and uh, we use this as a prompt of stable diffusion and enter. And then uh, the image that you get uh, is something like this. And uh, if you look uh, close, the Japanese uh, people are there uh, gathered uh, at the conference. Uh, but uh, if you do not like uh, this uh, conference, uh, then, of course, you'll be able to edit uh, the prompt and then uh, you'll be able to get closer to the image that you want. So the prompt of Hyperkloba is quite similar. Uh, you will be writing the text, uh, and let's give you an example. Also, we will be responding to a chat. A and B are uh, chatting. Yes, uh, we've uh, written this down after uh, one line skip. And then uh, there'll be a three back and forth uh, chit chats between A and B. And this is uh, important information to show what kind of chat uh, is underway. And then uh, enter uh, the recent conversation. So this overall will become a prompt. Uh, and uh, the system will be in charge of A this time. And prompt up to now, uh, depending on the role, uh, you can categorize. So the task description, uh, an example in the center, uh, and the uh, current uh, dialogue towards the bottom. So the sample uh, in the uh, center, uh, we have uh, three rounds of chit chats. And we call it shot. And uh, we only have uh, one chunk, so that's one shot. And if there are two chunks, uh, then two shots. So Hyperkloba, uh, at the end of the prompt, uh, in question mark, uh, uh, the system will generate uh, the response. Very easy. So uh, prompt uh, entered, uh, and uh, you get the answer. So uh, the, from the studio interface, uh, this could be sent, and also to API, the prompt uh, will be posted, and then uh, you get the response. Uh, so whenever necessary, the prompt uh, could be entered, and then uh, additional dialogue could be created. So compared with the image creation, it may be a little bit complicated. So for the uh, image and text, the prompt may be different how it is reflected. So the difference is uh, because of the format of the data, which is the basis. And uh, for image, for the image uh, evaluation, it is uh, largely based on the visual itself. It's based on the number of evaluators who can agree on the output itself when there are multiple evaluators looking at the same time. So depending on the uh, evaluator, we are um, cutting in the pace so that their assessment will be uh, becoming similar. Uh, while evaluation of the text will be largely depending on evaluators' subjective per perceptions in their specific circumstances. So if there are multiple evaluators, uh, it is very rare that they have the same perception of the same thing. So the uh, feeling of the, uh, those evaluators, we are going to make a prompt so that the, uh, their feelings or perceptions will be similar as much uh, as possible. So the output is generated. Uh, so both image and text, uh, those are very different. So the knowledge you need for the image prompt is uh, to see what kind of keywords can give uh, what kind of uh, impact. So for the uh, language, uh, prompt. You need uh, linguistics expertise and uh, deep knowledge about uh, how the world is uh, going. Uh, for example, for the uh, response to hyperclover system, uh, let's think about uh, another example of user responding. So on the 10,000 yen uh, bill, Shibusawa Eichi is the uh, face. And uh, does he know this face? So using the Wikipedia uh, description, we would like to get the response for this. So using Wikipedia and the Hyper Clover, uh, can we really generate the text using description in Wikipedia? The answer is no, uh, because the foundation model is not a search engine. So data that is used uh, for training uh, cannot be always be extracted as uh, for the trained model. Therefore, uh, we have to make sure that the prompt knows the external knowledge. So how can we do that? The answer is to use multiple prompts 
uh, to acquire results and uh, transfer the results from uh, certain, pro certain prompts to uh, other prompts. So this process is called prompt chaining. The flow is as follows. First, uh, we will extract the name of the person uh, from the response text using the named entity recognition technique, and uh, we will give it to Wikipedia, and we get the uh, long text. So using Hyperclover, we get the summary of this. And then the summarized text will be put back to the original pl prompt and inserted into the prompt. This is what we want to use, but the original prompt uh, regarding the use of the knowledge, there was no description about it. Therefore, we are adding that description as well. So by doing so, uh, so we can make a model of how to use the knowledge. So Hyperclover will be, uh, be applying the knowledge to output the result. So, so far, I've talked about the prompt with examples. So at the end of my talk, I'd like to talk about the evaluation of Hyperclover. So the Japanese uh, 82 billion model, uh, we used uh, uh, Megatron LM. And in line, we have our own corpus for the language model. But for the 82 billion data, as you can see, the data size is, is uh, 1.8 terabyte. So that's the size of the corpus. So to make this corpus, we used the line uh, chat and open data. We are not using those uh, related to line service, so please rest assured when you use Hyperclover. Evaluation will be performed by the RCQA task. So like this, the question and the context set is used. And on top of that, we also have the response or answer. In this example, uh, this is about the uh, Chinese uh, uh, Empress name. And the uh, uh, question is, what is the name of the dynasty founded by China's only empress, Wu Jiqian? But uh, the answer is Wu Zhou. And uh, this right answer can be easily extracted. And uh, if it, it is easy to extract this, and then the, this is correct. And uh, um, there is no data link. So let's take a look at the evaluation result. So uh, the third. 340 mega parameter model achievement and the response ratio is 86% or higher. And 6.9 billion and 13 billion and 39 billion models. Uh, so we're getting closer, uh, but still uh, we were not able to surpass. However, with 82 billion, uh, there were a lot of tuning and parameters uh, were fine-tuned uh, and uh, we were able to uh, exceed. So 82 billion uh, model uh, text generation uh, capabilities, uh, we are applying uh, various places. Uh, so perhaps uh, Hyperclova uh, could be effective uh, in many of the applications. So 82 billion, how to apply in applications. Uh, Yamazaki-san uh, will explain. Please. Hello, everyone. I belong to NLP development team. This is Yamazaki speaking. So Sato talked about uh, Hyperclova, how it is being used, uh, and also 82 billion model and a large a model. Uh, this is has been successful. But from here onwards, uh, I'd like to uh, talk about uh, how uh, we can enrich a, 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 the life using Hyperclova. Uh, so oh, this uh, base uh, model has not been uh, finalized. However, we have been working on uh, various applications. And I'd like to talk about dialogue system first. At NLP team, using Hyperclova, uh, we have been implementing dialogue system. By using Hyperclova, uh, compared to the past, uh, a richer response could be achieved. Uh, and also chatbot uh, mimicking uh, characters uh, could be uh, made. And until uh, this year, uh, we have been uh, working on very sophisticated dialogue systems, so let me report. So let me give you the background to start with. So right now uh, in uh, the real world, uh, many dialogue systems are used in rule-based. So smart speakers uh, 
also uh, is using rule-based uh, system. Uh, so uh, you identify uh, the phrases uh, of uh, the speaker and then uh, creating a fixed uh, phrases uh, to create responses. And uh, of course, it is good because uh, human beings uh, can control. However, flexibility uh, is uh, the downside. So do you like brown? Uh, so if you ask a random question and then uh, there will be a response uh, coming back that I don't understand the question. And sometimes the response uh, really uh, neglects uh, what uh, the users are asking. And then, of course, uh, users are dissatisfied. In order to solve this, Amongst uh, the researcher of a dialogue system, uh, they are focusing on generation-based uh, system. So this is based on uh, deep learning. It's very flexible uh, and interesting. Uh, responses uh, could be gained. And hypercloba uh, is also generation-based uh, as well. So uh, let me uh, actually show you how it works.出社でしたらどちらが好みですかうん、どっちも経験したことがあるのですか個人的には出勤したい派ですかねそれはなんでですかやはり会社へ行くという行為自体が仕事モードに切り替えられる気がするからですね なるほど。少しわかります。満員電車がきついので私はお家お家派ですか。確かに通勤ラッシュは大変ですよね。そうなんですよね。はい、このように likewise what I have written has been understood uh, and opinions were incorporated into the response. So how exactly is hyperacloba used uh, and uh, how this uh, dialogue system is realized is what I would like to cover next. So it's very flexible uh, and the conversation continued. Uh, and um, this uh, dialogue uh, system uh, who is very capable uh, was it uh, just uh, based uh, on uh, one single technology? Uh, no, that is not the case. So uh, this is a dialogue system based on just one uh, prompt. Uh, it appears uh, that the conversation is underway. However, uh, uh, right away, a, a let's uh, talk later. And uh, that's the end of the conversation. Uh, and then uh, if you ask uh, Birthday parties are held, uh, and then uh, not particularly. So it's kind of boring uh, statement. Uh, so in order to achieve this, uh, in order to create interesting response, what can we do? Earlier, Sato-san explained about hyperclobal chaining, uh, and uh, rich uh, text uh, and conversation can be created. And looking at uh, this diagram, uh, this uh, organizes architecture uh, when hyperclobal uh, is implemented. Uh, so in order to decide what to enter, uh, pre-process takes place. And with pre-process, uh, what kind of hyperclobal output do we want to get uh, is considered. Uh, so. Uh, will it be a, some uh, irritating response uh, or uh, easing response? Uh, and then uh, prompt programming and parameter controlling uh, should take place and uh, also using NLP for subtask uh, solving with hyperclova can be uh, done. And uh, through pre-processing, a uh, prompt is created and entered into hyperclova and uh, output uh, is generated, but sometimes uh, the response uh, you do not like. Then uh, post-process uh, uh, will solve this. Uh, so uh, it will detect uh, an uh, inappropriate uh, response and uh, make modifications. Uh, so using hyperclobal and NLP, adding and editing is possible. And uh, also uh, through various uh, filtering, uh, when uh, generation uh, is not enough, and then uh, it goes uh, back uh, and a uh, re-response uh, is created. And uh, now the dialogue system uh, with a uh, hyperclobal based uh, has been created uh, using uh, the external knowledge uh, uh, to complement uh, hyperclobal knowledge. Uh, and uh, also we have a persona consistent response prompt. And uh, in the probe processing, 
we detect uh, those uh, that uh, ends uh, the conversation and make modifications. So not only relying on hyperchloba, uh, but by using uh, various NLPs, uh, this sophisticated conversation is achieved. Uh, so with uh, pre-processing and uh, post-processing, how much do we do? On the left-hand side, it's a one single prompt, uh, but uh, it's a very a, uninteresting. Uh, but uh, with pre-process and post-process, uh, you can see uh, that there are a lot of content uh, and conversation uh, tends to continue. So uh, the birthday, uh, it is asked two times, and it is the same. It's March 24th. Uh, this is uh, because uh, the memory is contained or retained through pre-processing. So our system, uh, we achieve joined two competitions. Uh, on the left, uh, you can see the Dialogue System Live competition. Uh, and on the right, uh, this was held uh, last month, a Dialogue Robot uh, competition. Controlling humanoid robot uh, and uh, uh, for uh, tourists. Uh, and uh, we won uh, two um, in live competition and one in uh, robot competition. But uh, we realized a lot of challenges, uh, but uh, this uh, dialogue uh, system of line has been evaluated uh, very highly. Uh, so this uh, pre-process and post-processing technology can only be used for dialogue systems. No, that is not the case. Uh, we want to apply this uh, uh, technology is uh, so that uh, we can come up with other applications uh, to help people write text. That is Hyperchloba Writer. Hyperchloba Writer uh, has a high uh, generation capability and it helps uh, people to write. And uh, around you, uh, I'm sure uh, that you write a lot Japanese uh, and uh, you are using a lot of time to write texts. So for instance, sending email to customers. I'm sure uh, you often write email and uh, you take minutes uh, during uh, meetings. And uh, if you use Hyperchloba Writer, uh, then uh, within seconds, uh, this will uh, write a text on behalf of you. So uh, let's uh, show you a demo uh, to write uh, a daily report. So on the left-hand side, uh, you write uh, the text of what you've done. And there's like uh, a fact that you did code review, you went to lunch, and implemented Hyperchloba Writer. Uh, and uh, towards the end, uh, you have to take online trainings. And uh, towards the bottom, uh, you enter uh, the item uh, for a daily report, uh, uh, the uh, business to do uh, and realization. And then uh, now Hyper uh, Cloba Writer uh, is uh, working in the background uh, and now generated, as you can see, uh, code review, the fact that you did this task, and also the fact that you did uh, implement uh, Hyper Cloba Writer is included in the report. And realization, um, this is the text that it generated. And also to do, yes, online class has to be attended, and uh, it is very clear. So uh, this uh, rough uh, memo uh, written by human beings uh, are very well organized. So now I show you the summary capability. So on the left, uh, you would enter the text uh, that you would like to summarize. And this is a um, The writer uh, actually worked in the background uh, and the summary came out. Uh, and for instance, the fact that uh, with Yahoo Japan, uh, we are uh, holding tech conference uh, and uh, all these uh, summary has been uh, well organized. And other than that, uh, mail text could be generated. Uh, and uh, let's uh, look into it on the left hand side uh, from and to and title and uh, also bullet points of uh, what uh, you would like to uh, tell. And uh, the output, as you can see on the right hand side, uh, it's a well uh, written email. Uh, you can see, of course, uh, the person that you're sending to and uh, the correct dates are, are also included. So this is very accurate. Uh, and of course, uh, Hyperchloba uh, capability is uh, working in the background, but at the same time, uh, once again, pre-process and post-process uh, is in being included. So for instance, uh, the fact that uh, the dates are correct, uh, validated 
safety check is being uh, taken place uh, to make sure uh, that you get the right uh, output. So hyperglobal writer, uh, not only for reports and email, uh, this will help you write uh, other documents. And uh, also, uh, it uh, uses uh, the eBase model so you can scale around you. I'm sure there are a lot of tasks uh, that you would like to solve through Hyperglobe. Uh, so uh, please let us know through Twitter. So now, Hyperglobe Writer, uh, what uh, is the goal? So for uh, text writing uh, from a person, uh, people uh, will have to plan uh, what to write uh, and then uh, start to write uh, the text. Uh, but uh, the Japanese language is uh, very difficult. And if you're not used to it, you need to check the template uh, and other functionalities. So it's cumbersome. So with a hyperglobal writer, uh, you will be able to reduce the time it requires. Uh, of course, planning, you have to do it. Uh, but uh, as long as you give the contents, hyperglobal uh, will come up uh, with an uh, initial draft uh, within two seconds or so, and then uh, you make modifications. And how much uh, will it take uh, to modify or fix? Of course, uh, this will determine the capability of Hyperglobe Writer. So uh, our first challenge is to improve uh, the accuracy. And uh, of course, uh, the saved time, uh, you can allocate uh, uh, to your uh, rest time. So lastly, I would like to talk about the next steps of this app. First, Hyperclover Writer is something that we like to use in different places in the company and see how applicable it is in our work. And after that, we like to do some additional functions and improvements and then release the version as a demo. So please uh, wait for that. Uh, we will be distributing it to you. Next, uh, Sato-san will take over and talk about how to deploy foundation models in real world. Sato-san, please. Thank you. Uh, I'm Sato again. I'd like to talk about the practical, uh, some of the practical topics. So far, we talked about the Japanese version 82 billion model, how to use it, performance, and uh, uh, application areas. But at the end of the day, if we have this foundation model, are we OK? The answer is uh, completely no because uh, we have to look, look at the three things. Uh, let's uh, take a look one by one. First, generation results, fairness, and uh, eth uh, ethical uh, perspectives. In NAP development team, fairness and ethics, these are the two things that we have been discussing for years, uh, for one, more than one year. We started from scratch for the ethics filter. In line, hypercrover, output for all, almost all of the outputs we are already using it for example earlier dialogue example was this the last part filter is the uh, ethics filter and also already in line clover ai call we are using hyper clover in techverse ai company's uh, colleague wataoka san uh, for the AI reliability visualization stress test. This is another topic for this conference. And uh, uh, some of the um, uh, features that he will be talking about is coming from this function. So from NL development, we would like to introduce more details going forward. So please uh, be excited about it. Secondly, the generation results, uh, accuracy and uh, reliability of that. The output from Hyperclover is based on the text uh, generation. So when users extract the text, but uh, it's, it's actu actually uh, done by the machine. And this is one example. Uh, naturally, it's not, uh, 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 it's a generative summary. It's not a faithful summary. So uh, when we have the conference jointly with the line and Yahoo Japan, and uh, it says official website, uh, blah, blah, blah. But the third point, uh, future society with technology, we cannot find the third point. This is a problem. So for this problem, to address this, we use the hallucination and uh, uh, contradiction discovery uh, functions. And this is a, a prototype. But there are some expressions which are not included in the original text, but we were able to extract this expression. Going forward, we would like to increase the accuracy 
and also we would like to develop more of these functions so that the line can make a full-fledged con contribution to the group. Lastly, I'd like to talk about the usage cost for the model. With the foundation model software development, this is the very first uh, step. Uh, by doing this very fast, and then uh, we can uh, increase the uh, level of development. But at the same time, uh, we can clarify the cost for that. And Yamazaki-san showed you the diagram. Uh, how is it working today? Well, the answer is, uh, it depends. What you are seeing here is uh, some of those cases. In many cases, uh, like good case, the benefits of the foundation model can be enjoyed, and then in terms of time and money, we can save. On the other hand, for the uh, checking of the uh, what is generated by the uh, foundation model, it costs money sometimes, or the result may not be satisfactory, and you have to respond once again. And then you uh, are incurring additional costs, and then you may have a cost overrun. And then the benefit of introducing this may be lost. So in order to address this problem, there are several ways. The easiest one is to get the smaller foundation model with the same result. Compared with 82 billion, we use the 6.7 billion model here. For the downstream task, how was the uh, result? We got that result. And the result was, in summer 2022 intern result, J data set, J common sense QA was the data set. And uh, some of the uh, questions were answered by this. And the result was, for the roller tuning 6.7 billion model, we were able to uh, go over this level. But uh, compared with the human ability, it is not as good. So in this situation, for the downstream task, where there is uh, not so much difference with the human ability, it is possible that we can use these smaller models. So we will need to continue to develop these uh, um, less costly methods. So for the future challenges of our team, I'd like to mention this. We would like to start studies of the multimodal systems going forward. For some time at LINE, LINE Sound Research backend Clover assistant model was something we have been developing. But going forward, we like to develop this more. First of all, please look at the demo. So Yamazaki-san, three days ago, please. Hi. Today, I'm here in Belsar, Shinjuku. I'm here in the place. I'm here in the place. Nerehodo. こちらの会場は収容人数800人だそうですね。ちなみにこの建物は住友不動産新宿グランドタワーといって地上40階建ての超高層ビルみたいですよ。へえ、そうなんですね。実はここでラインとヤフーが合同で開催しているテックバースっ
going over the uh, trough. So in the near future, we are hoping that we can get close to the human ability. If we do that, the challenges for NLP is to get the features that were not used in NLP in the past. So in the future, NLP engineers will be working on those features which were not used in other areas proactively. And in other areas, uh, people may not be so interested, but we would like to send signals in those uh, related to those areas. So like this, uh, to promote multimodal NLP, this kind of uh, uh, effort is necessary for the line NLP going forward. And at line, uh, we would like to continue to work on the foundation model uh, proactively going forward. So this concludes all of the agenda items that we wanted to cover today. But lastly, for the Japanese version Hyper Clover, there may be a fundamental question. When is the Japanese version available? Well, Clover Studio for the South Korean language in Korea, in a closed basis, it is already released in Japan. So what is the plan so far? 2023 fiscal year, within that year, we would like to provide this. So please wait for a while. So this concludes my presentation. Thank you. Sato-san, Yamazaki-san, thank you very much. From here onwards, it's a plus talk, uh, and uh, we will be highlighting uh, some uh, of uh, the points of uh, sessions, and uh, we would like to incorporate uh, questions uh, from the audience. Uh, so if you could uh, use the question mark on bottom uh, right uh, to post your question. And uh, the interviewer uh, is uh, Ikuhiro Nishiyama from Yahoo Japan. Thank you. Thank you. So very simply, Nishiyama-san, can you introduce yourself? Yes, I am from Yahoo Japan. Uh, and uh, I a, do the e, audio application. I am working on the audio op application. Okay, Nishiyama-san, uh, any areas that you would like to delve into? So, looking at uh, this, uh, you say a multi-purpose model in the past. Uh, however, now uh, you are referring to it as a foundation model. But why is that? Well, I think uh, not just ourselves, but the industry as a whole changed. Uh, last year, uh, when we presented, uh, it was a large scale, uh, general purpose uh, language. But uh, in line, uh, whether it be e scaling or Multipurpose, or can we take out uh, this uh, multipurpose? Uh, there was a discussion. Uh, however, uh, we decided to simply call it a base model or a foundation model. Uh, so uh, in 22, uh, if you would like to look for uh, articles or papers, uh, please uh, use a base model or foundation model. Uh, and moving on to the next uh, question, prompt. Uh, is uh, the uh, methodology that you are using. So pre-process and post-process, uh, you, you use a prompting uh, so that you'll be able to control uh, the responses. And that was very interesting. Uh, and uh, there are a lot of things that you can use. Uh, uh, however, uh, there are a lot of uh, calculations that are being used, uh, which it means uh, that we have to wait longer uh, for the response. So, for instance, in case of chatbot, uh, so uh, it would be a character just uh, not saying anything uh, but thinking. So, in order to re reduce uh, these challenges and overcome these challenges, uh, what approaches are you taking? Well, line NLP e team. Um, well, this uh, was uh, dealt with a uh, dialogue system, uh, and a uh, dialogue system has team has worked on this uh, challenging uh, item. So Yamazaki-san would like to respond. Yes, uh, when it comes to hypercloba, uh, as you saw in the dialogue, uh, 
demonstration, uh, it did take like five or six uh, seconds uh, to respond. And uh, to regenerate uh, every time, it takes like uh, two or three e seconds. So the filtering in post process, if you repeat this many times, and then uh, for until the generation uh, of the response, it does take time. So in order to reduce uh, this uh, time, uh, what can we do? Uh, this is uh, to achieve accuracy in the pre-processing stage as much as possible. So that's what we can do. So as much as possible in pre-processing, uh, raise uh, the accuracy of a prompt. And uh, for instance, uh, make uh, ethical responses, uh, we tell them, uh, so that uh, it will not be checked uh, through the filtering of uh, ethics. I see. You focus on pre-processing. And uh, towards the end, uh, you mentioned that a small base model, foundation model, is being used. Uh, are you thinking about using smaller models? Yes, uh, we're thinking about that. Uh, so, uh, of course, uh, we are we have a lot of scientific interests, uh, so larger the better. Of course, uh, that's uh, one direction, uh, but uh, assumed uh, cost uh, will increase, uh, and of course, uh, the cost to build uh, will uh, increase. So if the performance can be reached uh, with a smaller model, uh, then of course, uh, smaller the better. Uh, so that's the mindset that we have. Uh, and hyperglobal smaller model, in solving uh, these uh, problems. So un based on our experiment, the size of the model that we showed you uh, in the e smaller model, uh, we know that uh, we cannot achieve the same level of performance. So 6.7, 6.9, uh, those that are larger, uh, of course, it could be applied, uh, but in the billions level, uh, perhaps uh, the smaller model uh, will not be able to accommodate. So uh, in the e summer, uh, intern results are being used. And uh, from uh, future, in the future conferences, uh, we would like to talk about it. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, let's move on to the next uh, uh, area, that is the internal competition of the dialogue system. I liked it very much. You had open track and a situation track, and uh, you got the award in both tracks. That was very impressive for each one of those tracks. So what was the point that you emphasized or uh, focused on each track? Yes, in the open track and in the situation track, yes, we competed. I was responsible for the development of the open track product, so I will explain this. Well, there was a boring uh, uh, response problem, but uh, if the content is uh, does not have any substance, and then user does not know how to respond, so the chatbot should be able to provide topics uh, tactically. So that is a kind of fun uh, chatbot. So as much as possible, for example, if user has a niche uh, hobby, and uh, even it's a very particular hobby, the chatbot should be able to follow and uh, engage in the conversation rather than just uh, cutting the conversation short by giving a boring answer so that uh, they can continue to have a dialogue and a conversation with the user. So the richness of the content is something that uh, I focused on. And for the large-sized uh, general-purpose language system, we never know what is to be generated. It is quite random. So we are re managing uh, um, so that the system does not generate uh, inappropriate responses in terms of uh, ethical standards. So that is something that we focused as well. Probably the viewers, uh, when they hear about open and a situation, maybe they don't know the difference. In the open truck, uh, that's the track where the customers uh, do not know what kind of topics we are dealing with. So we have to respond to any situation. That's the track. On the other hand, for the situation track, it's not a very rare situation, but we deal with certain situations. Or, for example, asking your senior for drinking party uh, despite his or her resistance. So different 
questions, but on the background, the technology we need is very common in both those tracks. So efficiently developing those functionality, that was something that we emphasized as a manager. Thank you. So for Clover, for the situation track or open track, uh, which do you think uh, the Clover is good at? Hyper Clover is good at? Well, I can't say which, because uh, for both there are different pr uh, difficulties. For the open truck, we'll ne we never know the topics to be dealing with. So the generation of text uh, it should be safe. How to safely deliver the text is the key. And as Yamazaki-san said, human conversation is basically boring. And each person has its own position, but uh, try to make efforts to uh, continue with the conversation. That's what humans do. But when it comes to foundation model or computer, they don't have the motivation to do that. So if a human says something boring, and then the system says goodbye, so we have to avoid uh, those responses. For the situation truck, there is a certain purpose that you have to achieve. That's the most difficult part. So this need to achieve a purpose, you have to achieve it despite the generative based model. So that's a difficulty. So each one has a difficult challenge, but we can concurrently develop or as we do that, the very first step is something that we can do with the hyper clover type of uh, large size systems. However, in the very first two weeks of implementation, we realized that, uh, oh, this is not working only with the foundation model, and then we might lose in the competition um, pre-screening. That's why we made uh, some other uh, systems and came up with other uh, way of using the foundation system. That was a uh, uh, fun uh, we had uh, trying to uh, win in the competition. Uh, we want to entertain uh, one more question because of the limitation of time. Well, maybe can we receive one question from Nish Nishiyama-san and another from the audience? Nishiyama-san, please. Yes. Uh, in the other conversation competition, there was a, a conversation robot competition. Is it done by the multimodal system that you talked about at the last part of your presentation? Is that something that you had uh, in, uh, in view? Yes, exactly. For the conversation in the robot competition, we had to make the robot body to move. So we needed to uh, come up with the codes uh, to operate the movements of the body. So that was uh, also managed by the conversation system and decided in the system. So we implemented that. And also for the sound, audio, uh, we put some codes to adjust the tonality and so forth. So it's not only the control of the text itself. We had to have a control of other things. That's why it was the first attempt we used a multimodal. So when you hear multimodal, Everyone may say that think that, that we were already doing multimodal. Yes, we did to a certain extent, but towards the real robot in the voice rec recognition and response system, uh, we were not doing it at all in the uh, beginning. That's what we realized. We got the award and uh, got some comments from the judges. And the judges said that, uh, um, some of them said that uh, uh, no team was able to uh, actually fully utilize the multimodal system at all. So that was a criticism that we hear uh, in the competition. Uh, now we would like to uh, entertain a question from the audience. How do we respond to a um, malicious prompt? Yamazaki-san, what do you think? I don't think we have a, a a perfect solution yet, but users, uh, there were some users uh, who tried to make the language model say something bad with a malicious intent. Therefore, we have to be able to filter those intent 
and also without uh, using the filter, maybe we can adjust some of the responses. Going forward, uh, we would like to conceive a better way to respond to those situations. Yes, in the beginning of the development of the hyperclover, if we use hyperclover or a foundation model, SQL injection database, we thought that we could do that for the prompt and we were going to write a paper. However, it was already in the archive, so we can't do that anymore. But uh, if you have a malicious intent, it is possible to do that. But uh, for us, we would like to do our best to prevent that. And so the providing that service itself is uh, um, appropriate, we believe. But uh, at the same time, we have to make sure that the users uh, will be educated so that uh, they will be using it in the right manner.